Hello, is your garden absolutely as productive as you want it to be this year? I'm going to tell you how to do that. I'm Liz Sorab and this is By The Farm. Around eight years ago I became uh, really quite unwell and in fact I ended up being bed bound for about four months and I realised that I was never going to go back to work in a normal nine to five job and I would need to find another way uh, to make a living. And so I suggested to Mr. J that I stayed at home and grew all of our fruit and veg as my way of contributing towards the family finances. And that's exactly what I've done in our previous home. And then again here, I have tended to this garden. I have created a food forest and I have supplied around 80 to 85% of the food that goes on our table from our garden. So back in June, 2015, I started writing a blog, a kind of everyday record of uh, what was going on. And from 2017, I've been making videos. And you really don't need a huge amount of space to grow an awful lot of food. My veg garden here uh, is 250 square meters. And that's about the size of uh, a standard full size uh, allotment plot. But actually about half of my space, or in fact, just over half my space, is taken up with pathways that I choose to have really wide. Our garden is in a cloud today. So we've got this very fine rain that's coming down and making the ground very wet, which is great because we've had weeks without rain. My paths are a minimum of three feet, 90 centimetres wide. And in fact, this central one is more like four feet. That's 120 centimetres wide. And if you reduce those down to 30 centimetres, just one foot wide, you would have an awful lot more beds or you could create a similar garden in a much smaller space. And not only do I have really wide pathways, but I choose to grow about 25% of my beds to have non-edible ornamentals in them, which you don't need to do, but I choose to do that because I get so much pleasure and so much enjoyment from them. My new book was written to encourage and inspire you to get out into the garden and grow what you like and to enjoy it and savour every moment of it. It's available on my website, bythefarm.com, on Amazon Worldwide and also at all good bookstores. At this time of year, every bed is absolutely packed with plants, all busy growing, all to give us some food later on in the year. How exciting is that? Uh, my corn is doing really well. There is a saying that says something like knee high by the 4th of July. And um, even if I stand up on level with this, this corn is. However, my sweet corn over there certainly isn't. And I'm not panicking about it because all it means is I'm going to get sweet corn in three separate waves, three separate harvests. I'm quite happy with that. And what I can see over here uh, in the rain is the slugs that I haven't seen for weeks and weeks because it's been so dry, are now having a field day on the lupins. Oh, I would like to pick them all off, but do you know what? I'm going to leave them because the lupins have had a really tough time. They've put on an amazing display, but they've succumbed to the a huge number of aphids and the ladybirds have really only arrived in any numbers in the last few days. and uh, for the last two of those, it's been raining non-stop. They don't seem to mind, uh, uh, but the slugs, yes, are having a field day. And we're back to the veg and the productive garden. Sorry, digressing yet again. So what I have in each bed is a combination of uh, vegetables, herbs, and flowers. And even if you're not growing the flowers, which I highly recommend you do, there are some fantastic companion planting combinations that you can do to really enhance and to boost your productive garden. Uh, so it's worth checking out those. So uh, you've got your beds and they're chock-a-block full of plants, but are they? Now is the time as they are growing to have a little look and to decide do you know how big these plants are going to be eventually? So in this bed, uh, I know that the sweet corn is going to grow up. It's going to cast some shade underneath it, but it's not going to spread very far. So if I want to, I can plant things in between the sweet corn stems. And that's exactly what I've done. Here I've got uh, flowers in um, and uh, at this end, 
I've got some brassicas, so I've got some uh, Tuscan black kale, um, which is one is doing better than another, but you know, they're okay. So we've got two there. They'll fill in between the spaces. Here I've got her uh, cosmos and, uh, and also some perennial flowers as well. And to illustrate a little bit further what I mean, these are the other two sweet corn beds. Uh, this one was, uh, first of all, it was planted with broad beans, fava beans, and they are producing beans now, which is great. They haven't grown very tall. I have no idea why. Perhaps it was a lack of water or a lack of attention. But anyway, <laughs> they are producing some beans. And down this side is a vast amount of thyme, which I planted in here last year, not realising just how big the plants would spread. So I've kind of made holes in them, planted the sweet corn uh, through the thyme, and I've planted the sweet corn in amongst the beans there. But added to that, there's also some dill, which is self-sown from last year, and I've got some baby leeks in there, just kind of growing on until they get to their uh, eventual home. And on this side, uh, well, I had to weed this bed because I had let it get a terrible mess and basically start with a blank canvas. So it's got a sweet corn down the middle of it. I've also put in squash plants to grow underneath. And this is very similar to the Three Sisters idea, which was uh, taken from um, indigenous peoples uh, planting practices uh, where they would plant sweet corn beans and squashes in the same space. Now what we have to remember is that our climate here in the UK is very different uh, to uh, that in America and so very often our beans grow way faster than our sweet corn so I grow my beans elsewhere but I do use the squash under my beans as ground cover. So I've got squash uh, newly put in under there the sweet corn is still fairly newly put in, but it is establishing itself. And then in between, I've also planted in some cosmos at that end, then some thyme and some nasturtium. And over on the far side of the bed, that side is some borage. Now, the reason that I've put all of these in together is that I'm aware of the eventual size the plants are going to get to, how much space they're going to take in the bed. And I've gauged, guessed, <laughs> how well they're going to cope with having that many plants in one bed. So the squashes are all planted to grow this way into the space over there because so I'm borrowing some of the path and possibly even some of the, uh, the grass over there for the squashes to grow on. But I could, if I wanted to, create uh, some climbing structure for them to climb up. One of the key tools that I use in my garden uh, is my phone or more to the point the camera on my phone and I bring it out and I take lots of photos of each bed which allows me to go back indoors and spend some time looking at the photos and then I can work out what's in each bed how much space there is how big the plants that are in there are likely to get and therefore how much room I still have for putting more plants in it. So now you've identified where all the spaces are that you could put plants in, where are you going to get those plants from? Well, if you've been really organised, you would have sown some extra a month or so ago and now they would be ready to go into the ground. Or possibly like me, you sowed them really quite a long time ago and you haven't got them into the ground, so now they're really struggling, poorly little plants, desperate to get into the ground and still not there yet. But I do have some plants that are in good shape and good health, and these are ready to go into the ground, they're going to grow away nicely. And this is because I have been succession sowing, continuously sowing new seeds, so I have young plants to put into those spaces. But what do you do when you don't have a load of plants just sitting around waiting to go into the ground? I think there are a whole load of places that you can look to find additional plants. Social media often have groups, so I'm a member of our local uh, gardening group on Facebook, for example, and Gumtree and all sorts of online places will offer plants either free or for just a few pence. 
If you're on an allotment or a community garden, often there is a table uh, or a shop where you can exchange your excess. And of course, if you have friends who garden, you can often swap plants with them. So for example, this year I have swapped some of my surplus squash plants for uh, some lavatera and also uh, some young lettuces. These really won't take very long until they're ready to eat, which is brilliant. It means I can just pop them into any spaces I've got. So big thanks to my neighbour Sue, and uh, I'm so pleased that we could do that swap. For there are some plants that my parents never ever bothered growing from seed because a local gardener always sold them. So we always bought our leeks from Fred the Cabbage. Not a brilliant name, but his is by choice. Uh, so we bought leek plants from Fred. And we also bought runner beans from him because he would start those off and have a surplus of those. He had a little board just outside his house, which lets everybody know what was available to buy. And you just rock up, he'd dig a few out of the garden, wrap them in newspaper and home you went, having parted with really just a very small amount of money to be able to fill your garden. If you're new to an area or you're a new gardener and you haven't built those links with other people yet, you can very often order young plants to be sent to you through the post or go to your local garden centre and plant nursery and see what they have there. Now, if I believed everything I saw on social media, I would probably feel like a bit of a failure for not having grown everything from scratch myself. But the reality is most of us can't do that. And indeed, I don't. And I'm happy to admit that I go and buy plants whenever I need to. I have always been an utter failure at growing Swede, rutabaga, and last year I bought some tiny little plug plants and do you know what? They grew really well, so I've done it again this year. I've also ordered in some sweet potato plug plants. They're growing in my polytunnel, they're doing really nicely too. They've settled in and they're starting to vine up a bit. And I don't think there is any issue with buying what you need to buy to get your garden the way you want it to be. So now you've decided what you're going to grow in any empty spaces that you have that will accommodate those plants. And the next thing to think about is, what will be coming out of your garden very soon and therefore creating some new spaces. So in this bed, uh, it won't be too long before the broad beans come out, maybe only another month. And then I'll have more spaces in between the sweet corn to put plants if I want to. And luckily, I know that I have allocated this space to grow some leeks in this year. The baby leeks are already in the ground here. They are really tiny, but they don't need transplanting for another couple of months. So they've still got plenty of time to grow, by which time the broad beans will be out. The sweet corn will have grown a bit taller and I will be able to see where the spaces are that I can put some leeks into. And this week I know that I will be harvesting garlic. So there's a little bit of garlic in my brassica tunnel there. So I'm going to have a look and see what brassicas I have so I can make maximum use of that space and of having the netting over the bed to stop butterflies and moths laying their eggs onto those brassicas and the caterpillars eating all the plants. Now, luckily, there's still plenty of time to be sowing seeds. You can sow some for quick crops like radishes that will be ready in you know, five weeks or so. But we can also be sowing some plants that will feed us later in the year, throughout the winter and into that hungry gap and spring next year. And if you want to know which seeds you can sow over the next month or so, I'll leave a link on the screen and also in the video description.